Hello everyone, Sigmar7 here. Well, it's already the end of the month, and so it's time for yet another Blu-ray haul. Um, yeah, I'm a little tired today. I just got back from the theater seeing The Northmen, and that was an epic film, I must say. Um, definitely don't make movies like those anymore, or at least not too often. But anyway, um, see, I got quite the pickup this past month. There were definitely a lot of deals, and I definitely have a few surprises for this pickup. Uh, before I begin, though, I just want to say... I am sorry for the delays when it comes to Heroes with Villains. My original intent was to try to get round, what is it, round 2, part 1 out by May the 2nd, because May the 2nd was the day I uploaded the last round, so it would have been a whole year since I've uploaded Heroes vs. Villains round, but life just gets in the way, and I'm still not close to finishing the round. It's just, what can I say, it's... But hopefully, um, things will calm down soon. Hopefully I'll try to get something together, um... Um, but, yeah. With that being said, uh, let's go ahead and see what I picked up this past month. First, here's just a bunch of, um, well, actually, first, here are the DVDs I picked up, which I only got three. Um, first up, I got uh, House on Haunted Hill, a Vincent Price film from 1959. Heard some good things about it. I've been always wanting to check out more Vincent Price movies, so, yeah. Then we got another film from 1959, Journey to the Center of the Earth. This is also from, 19 yeah, that same year. Um, I know this had a Blu-ray by Twilight Time, but they're super out of print and ridiculously hard to find. I hope this gets a, gets back into a print eventually on Blu-ray, but I remember seeing this movie a long time ago. I've been, I remember it being pretty good. And for this DVD, this is my my um, my um grand prize of the month, you could say. This is a super hard um, DVD to find, and that is Allegro Non Tropo. Yes, I was able to get a copy of this on Amazon for like... Uh, like 25 bucks, which I know that sounds expensive, but given this usually costs over a hundred or even more Yeah, but this is a really good animated movie from Italy that is meant to be sort of a satire towards um, uh, Disney's Fantasia, which you know is like one of my favorite um, Movies of all time and yeah, if you're a fan of Fantasia I definitely recommend checking this out as it's more of a uh, comedic take on it. The movie is on YouTube but um yeah, if you're fortunate enough to find this, uh, definitely pick it up. I hope this gets a blur release eventually, like by by Criterion or G Kids or Shout Factory or somebody. Anyway, on to the Blu-rays. First up, we got The Magnificent Seven, a classic Western from the 60s. Um, this was a really good movie, I must say. I can see what, that this took a lot of inspiration from Seven Samurai. Not as good as Seven Samurai, but still a pretty good movie nonetheless. Then I got Serenity, the... Finale to Firefly, I believe, or somewhat the finale, I guess. Um, I still have not watched Firefly yet. I've been meaning to. Um, I hear the movie serves as a good, like, it wraps up a lot of the loose ends since Firefly was supposed to last longer, but it got canceled. So yeah. Next we got The Apartment. Um, trying to get more into Billy Wilder movies. From the few of his films I have seen, I really enjoyed, like you know, Some Like It Hot, which is really funny. But this is supposed to be his best movie, I think. So yeah. Then we got um, Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead. Um, I actually managed to get this for free on Amazon, believe it or not. Um, I, somehow, I don't know how this happened, but I guess I had like a some Amazon gift card in display. I don't know how it happened, but I got it for free. And I hear this is actually not that bad of a remake to the George A. Romero film. Now, obviously, I'm not expected to be as good as that movie, but they say it's a pretty fun zombie film. Next, we got a couple Warner Archive Blu-rays, The Curse of Frankenstein. Really been wanting to get into the Hammer Horror films, and I hear this is one of the better ones. You have Peter Cushing as um, Victor Frankenstein, and then you have Christopher Lee as the monster. So that alone is worth checking out. Next, we have a Marx Brothers movie, A Night at the Opera. Lately, I've been really getting into the Marx Brothers films. I've only seen The Coconuts, uh, Animal Crackers, and Monkey Business. I still have yet to see um, Horse Feathers. Uh, duck soup and this so this is possibly one of the better ones so yeah here are two foreign language films i picked up there's i am love this is an italian film by okay i'm gonna butcher this pronunciation um luca guaganino i think is how you say his name he was the director of call me by your name and the suspiria remake um this is supposed to be really good i know about this film because of your movie sucks apparently told swin had to learn italian and russian for this role so it definitely sounds interesting there and then we got this Chinese film called Ocean Heaven. It's a story about a father and I guess his autistic son or something and something about an aquarium I guess but that alone just intrigues me. I think the cover intrigues me for some reason and 
I've heard this is supposed to be a really beautiful movie, so can't wait to check it out. Next are a couple of um, new releases. Uh, by new releases, I mean, you know, well, yeah, these are new releases. First up, we got The Humans. I only know about this movie because of Your Movie Sucks. Apparently, he really liked this film. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see what this is all about, I must say. Apparently, Amy Schumer is in it, which I am not an Amy Schumer fan whatsoever, but yeah, I'll still give it a shot anyway. And then we got the highly appraised, and yet I still haven't seen it, Spider-Man No Way Home. I'm really curious to see what all the hype is about, because people are calling this the best of the MCU films. I'm kind of wondering why they gave the regular Blu-ray slipcover, but the other recent Marvel films, um, they haven't been. Weird. Or a lot of the Disney-owned films they're doing, but... Still definitely curious to check this out, see what it's all about. Next we have, in my quest to collect all the, um or at least the ones worth owning, Disney animated classics, I got Atlantis The Lost Empire with the out-of-print slipcover. I don't know if you could tell, but the slip right here is a little uh, crinkled up, but it's still in mostly good condition. I agree with everything else. This is one of the more underrated um, Disney animated films. The sequel, you can just ignore that. It was meant to be a TV show, but they just turned it into a movie. But the first movie, I think, is an underrated classic. One might wonder, what would happen if Atlantis and Treasure Plant were both huge box office hits? Will we get more films like this by Disney? I mean, I guess we technically are with Strange World that's coming out later this year, so we'll see. Next are a few animes. We got Ghost in the Shell 2 Innocence. I love Ghost in the Shell. It's one of my favorite animes of all time. Even though I have yet to see the other Ghost in the Shell rated properties, I have not seen this or this, the series um, Standalone Complex. And speaking of which, I also picked up the movie um, Solid State Society, which this is a really out of print Blu-ray, hard to find. But I got it for a pretty good deal on Amazon. But yeah, definitely can't wait to check the show out. And good thing too, because I think we're getting, I can't remember the movie or series on Netflix that we're getting, so... Next, I picked up um, Season 1, Part 1, and Part 2 of Attack on Titan. Um, I've only seen the first half of Attack on Titan, and from what I have seen, I've really enjoyed. And my original goal was to um, to marathon the series leading up to the finale, until the news came out that they were going to make a Part 3 that will be coming out next year. So, yeah. Hopefully, by then, I'll have all the series on Blu-ray so that I can be caught up. And speaking of which, when I bought this Blu-ray, it also, I don't know if you can see it, but... Got the Attack on Titan t-shirt. So, yeah. That's really cool. Next here we got a Kino uh, Blu-ray. And that is Le Vampires from 1915. This was made by the same person who did Phantomas. F Phantomas? I'm not sure I say the name. I've seen that. I've not seen this. This is actually a film serial as it's split into ten parts. Or ten episodes, it says in the back here. Um, I know this movie really has nothing to do with vampires. It's not that. It's some other reason. But... Can't wait to check this out when I have time, because it's really long. Alright, next up we have some uh, uh, Criterion Blu-rays. We got The Ascent. Um, I rewatched this earlier this month with my family, and this is a really intense war film. It's made by the woman who directed this. She was married to Elm Klamov, the director of Come and See. And while I do prefer Come and See over this movie, um, this was still really good, and... Yeah, definitely worth checking into. So, yeah, it is intense, though. Next, I got Mulholland Drive. I mentioned this in the last criteri um, bleh, last Blu-ray update video that when I originally ordered this, it came without the slip for some reason. So I sent that back, got my money back, and I managed to get, you know, this on eBay for a... If I could pull it out... Oh, jeez. For, for some reason, they don't always want to come out. I don't know why, but anyway, yeah. As you can tell... A little snug in there, but yeah. I know it sounds weird to fuss over that, but I don't know. I just don't like the idea of having it all without it, this beautiful looking slip. So yeah, can't wait to check that movie out since it is considered David Lynch's best. Then we got Rashomon by Akira Kurosawa. Been wanting to get more into this director's movies. I've only seen um, Seven Samurai, which is one of my all-time favorites. I've seen Ran, Throne of Blood, Kagimusha, but I have not seen this yet. So yeah. And then I got The Seventh Seal by Igmar Bergman. This is a movie that's been on my radar for a long time. Again, haven't seen it yet. Can't wait to watch it. It's just, it really is an intriguing looking movie. So, the only Igmar Bergman movies I've seen so far are Fanny, Fanny and Alexander and Shame. So, yeah. Next are uh, two TV series I've picked up. One is uh, season one of Doctor Who. And by season one, I mean the reboot series. Well, not really reboot. I mean, I guess it's kind of a sequel series. But, yeah. 
I remember I used to watch this all the time when I was younger. When it, um, when I, when I first got Netflix, they had Doctor Who on there, and I started watching through that. Um, before they took it down, um, I would like to get the other Doctor Who series, or at least the ones worth owning. This is just the Chris Eccleston one. I would love to give David Tennant and Matt Smith. Everything after that I hear is not good. So yeah. And then I got the out of print Freaks and Geeks, the complete series. This is just, I guess this is a sitcom, but it's apparently supposed to be really good. And I don't know, it just, it's been, it's intrigued me for some reason for a while. And it's really hard to find, but I was able to get it for a good price on eBay. And now just two more things, and these are both by Arrow. I don't own a lot of Arrow Blu-rays, but I've been trying to get into Arrow some. First we got the 8 Diagram Pole Fighter. This is a new release that came out earlier this month. And um, this is regarded as one of the best martial arts movies. So I, I love martial arts movies, so this would definitely be worth checking into. And finally, my big prize of the month, aside from Allegro on Trumpo, is Solid Metal Nightmares, the films of um, Shinya Tsukamoto, I guess how you say it. Um, I just It was on sale, I got it, and I've only seen... Out of the ten movies in this set, I've only seen uh, Tetsuo the Iron Man from 1989. This is one of the strangest yet most intriguing like horror movies I've ever seen. And apparently this also comes with a sequel, um, Tetsuo 2 Body Hammer, as well as the short film The Avengers of Tenchu Kozo. We also got Tokyo Fist, which comes with Bullet Ballet. Um, I think that's it on this one. And then you got... You got the um, a snake of June, vital and haze, and then there's um, yeah we got this we got Kotoko and killing, so yeah definitely can't check out the, can't wait to check out the rest of these because Tetsuo the Iron Man was really good and I'm curious to see what the rest of these movies are like so so yeah really love this set so yeah that's my haul for um, April of 2022. Like I said, I hopefully if things go out well, I'll try to get um, back to work on Heroes of Villains. I know you guys have been really waiting patiently for that. It's just life has been in the way and all that stuff. So um, with all being said, I hope you all enjoy this, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Later.